the genius embedded systems like Think7000, Think UltraScale Plus, combined RM processors and programmable logic. Cornerstone for achieving high throughput data transfer in such systems, it's a direct memory access controller or DMEA. It serves as a critical bridge between software and hardware, enabling efficient data movement without CPU involvement. Despite its importance, working with DMEA is not straightforward. Engineers with hardware background often face challenges with Linux, Linux kernel itself, memory management or user space applications development. Conversely, software engineers may struggle with Axia infrastructure configuration, XCDMA IPQ behavior, or debugging low-level hardware interactions. This workshop is designed in order to close that gap. It provides complete, hands-on workflow from generating Linux with memory management for DMA operations control XCDMA, CDMA and VDMA in both C and Python environment. Here you will learn how to deploy Linux with built root and allocate memory by using two approaches recommended by Xilinx. How to build and automate software and hardware workflows by using the latest version of Vitus toolchain. How to reserve and manage memory regions in Linux for DMA and implement user space driver. How to write C drivers for XCDMA in both simple and scattergether mode for CDMA and for VDMA. And finally, how to integrate these drivers into Python in order to leverage low level control in high level development environment. By the end of the workshop, you will gain a deep practical understanding how to implement, control, and debug DMA pipelines that span both hardware and software, the critical skills in modern embedded systems development. In the first section, I will work through the code structure and usage workflow. Here I will explain you how everything is organized from source files and build automation and test scripts, and how to get started quickly. In the second section, I will teach you how to deploy Linux for Think7000 and Think Ultrascale Plus with build root out of tree and Vitus EDI. Here I will explain you what kind of components are required in order to get Linux up and running and how to deliver all these components. In the third section, I will explain you Linux memory management for DMEA operations. Here I will explain you not only how to locate memory for DMEA IP core itself, but also how to allocate memory for data transfer by using two main approaches recommended by Xilinx. Fourth section is devoted to XCDMA IP cores family. So in this section, I will explain you not only when and how to use every IP core, but also I will provide you C drivers to handle every IP core and C test applications that uh, conduct data transfer between write and read channel of every IP core. And in the fire section, I will demonstrate, I will explain you how to integrate implemented C drivers into Python. This section is extremely interesting because this section will demonstrate you, will teach you how um, to leverage low-level C programming into Python environment. So here also I have test scripts, the same as I have here in the first section for C applications, but only for Python. All test scripts, all drivers that I provide for the workshop were successfully tested on the development board like RTZ720 with Think7000 and the trends model with Think Ultrascale Plus. I would like to start with hands-on demo in order to demonstrate what you can learn after you complete the workshop. Here I have Vivada design with Sync Ultrascale Plus and four DMA IP cores. XDMA in simple mode and scatter gather mode, VDMA and CDMA. DMA IP cores with access stream channels have uh, looped write and read channels. 
for CDMA in order to conduct loop test, I did allocation of two buffers. Let's uh, demonstrate how to handle XCDMA in scatter gather mode. So for this, here I have sources for my workshop. Here I have connected target. Let's see how to delete this. Here I have connected target via SSH. So first of all, I would like to start with compiling application test application for scatter for XCDMA in scatter gather mode. So architecture ARM 64 sync ultra scale plus. Uh, and uh, the application test scattergather XDMA. Let's compile it. Okay, so here I have executable file that I will copy to the target. So test um, scattergather XDMA. And let's copy this into root directory. Okay, let's check. So here we have executable file. Let's call it on the target. And uh, from the log, uh, what I can see. So first of all, it's a approach that is used in order to locate. It's a device tree memory location. Uh, second, uh, that successfully allocate, were allocated descriptors, XDMA, epicores itself. Then that I start data transfer. Afterwards, I read status registers of uh, write and read channel and afterwards I'm doing verification of copied content. Besides that here I printed out the first and the last five words uh, from uh, the first and the five from the buffers. So and of course here I have application that copy verification passed successfully. I can call it again and again it can be seen that values in the buffer will be changed since the buffers are initialized by using random. Let's go back to the sources for this workshop and let's uh, compile application for Python. So here I have, uh, I need libraries for Python. So for, do, for this, I need to change a target. Here it's a PDMA. And um, as compilation is complete, I can go to the Python folder. And here I have some artifacts, namely shared library that I need to copy to the target. So this is a uh, shared library. This is a Python model itself and the Python script to test XDMA in scatter gather mode. Okay, that's all what I need. This I will copy also, uh, sorry, to the target. Let's copy the same. So, okay, I have here and here I can call this Python script test scatter gather demo.py. Okay, um, so uh, the script does the same as uh, C application did. So it so what it does it does memory allocation by using device three approach. Then it uh, gives feedback about successful allocation of uh, scatter gather XDMA descriptor chain. Uh, the uh, epicore itself, then data transfer started successfully, and afterwards I'm checking status register also for write and read channel. And, and afterwards I am um, um, I'm printed out uh, the first and the last five elements. This is uh, for input and for output buffer. So and uh, by uh, so and um, relying on these messages, so I can conclude the transfer was completed successfully. Let's repeat this again and again. So, and it can be seen that values in the buffer are different from call to call. So, uh, but in any way, any way, verification, copy verification uh, also passed. So, uh, therefore, here I demonstrated how I am using C and how I'm using Python in order to handle uh, data transfer between um, write and read channel of XDMA in scatter gather mode. As I already mentioned, for the workshop I provide source files, build automation and test scripts uh, that then you can see on the slides. So, uh, let's uh, let's uh, work through the workflow for the workshop. So in order to get started with the workshop, uh, the first Vivada project is required. So uh, and therefore uh, here I provide Vivada directory, Vivada folder with sticker scripts uh, in order to build Vivada project for uh, both targets, either Sync 7000 or Sync Ultra Scale Plus. So uh, by building Vivada project, system XAA archive will be exported. 
So uh, the next step is to uh, compile uh, a FSBL um, power management firmware, a bitstream, and it's optional. It will be compiled automatically, device, script, uh, device tree. So for doing this, Vitus CDI is required, namely Vitus component, uh, uh, platform component, that also can be built by using Vitus a Python API, uh, that's a part of this uh, build automation script, Vitus uh, underscore auto dot pi. So, uh, therefore, since uh, we have um, components or artifacts for um, primary boot device, the next step is to create components for secondary boot device. For doing this, uh, I am using, uh, as I already mentioned, out of three build root. All sources I provide here. So also here is make file is included and um, the, uh, build root project can be created just by using one call and also for um, both targets for Zinc 7000 and for Zinc Ultra Scale Plus. So um, if you are if you are using if you are using your own um, another tool, for example, Petla Linux or Yocta, you can skip this uh, step. So, or for example, you can use you can download exported build root as the key. Um, so uh, this is also a uh, recommend and. Um, all links uh, I provide for uh, how to uh, download exported build to the decay from my uh, Google Drive. <clears throat> so, therefore, therefore, we have here components for primary boot device, for secondary boot device, and therefore, boot bin file can be created. Uh, boot bin file and um, kernel compiled device tree and root of AS file in order to have our Linux up and running. So, therefore, the next step, the next step is to, to compile applications, uh, test appli drivers, uh, test applications, and Python shared uh, shared libraries for Python from the from the um, sources for the workshop. So, in order to do this, I provide one make file. It can be done via only one make file with certain targets. I will explain this uh, step by step and further. Uh, sections of the workshop, but <clears throat> uh, what is important to know here. So here I provide include a folder with uh, headers file, C headers file source. It's a C drivers um, for the MAA controllers test folder. It's um, C applications that uses a C driver in order to conduct a loop test for the MAA controllers. Also, I provide here a Python and Swig folders. It's um, folders that consist of some sources in order to generate shared library and therefore in order to uh, integrate C driver into Python, drivers into Python environment. So, um, and uh, as I already mentioned, for this, I'm using only one make file and um, in make file there is the paths to cross compiler um, and some additional files so feel free to uh, modify this according to your environment or if you are using exported if you download exported build root sdk you can use make file as is uh, without any modification and uh, <clears throat> uh, the last the last or uh, but not least uh, this is a kernel model. So as already mentioned here, I'm using two approaches to allocate memory recommended by Xilinx. And one of the approaches is related to CMA memory allocation. So for doing this, I'm using UDMA booth. Uh, here I provide UDMA booth sources. And um, here you can find in the folder also make file that you need to modify. Uh, so you were uh, by adding Paths to not only cross compiler but also paths to uh, Linux uh, kernel sources for your target. So this is quite important because if you, Linux kernel that you are using is quite different, so it will be impossible to insert the model um, and uh, get this model up and running on your target. So, in, um, so if you are using out of three build root here, so I have already integrated this UDMA booth uh, kernel model as a package. So therefore, on your target, you already will have compiled kernel model and can use this as is without any modification. So. Um, all steps, all steps that I just uh, described, so uh, can be 
Again, more detailed information about all the scapes can be found in the readme markdown file with uh, all links and um, instructions, detailed instructions how to go through all steps in the workflow for the workshop.